Hello, thanks for checking the video. So this is a quick run through to the setup. That's for who downloaded the project file from my website or for the ones that are just interested and want to see how I did it. So uh, it's been split in two simulations. The first one is for the branches. Just the simulation. And the second simulation is uh, for the leaves. So the, I, I'm going to show how I did it. So here we are inside uh, the branch simulation. So here I'm importing the model, splitting them, getting the branches here. First thing, I'm generating some splines from them, and this is done easily. If uh, uh, you can see, I just in a loop, I take a branch, I fracture it into several pieces, then generate some points and connecting them, and that's for each one of the branches. So. After this, I convert them to uh, some proxy geometry, and these are a lot of spheres, of course, and they are connected with some constraints that are generated over here. You can see them. Uh, I have also a second uh, version, a variation that uh, I think is better because it retains more the shape, which is the same concept, but instead of uh, having uh, spheres, the for the branches, what I did is uh, with a polywire, I generate one of these, uh, fracture it. Uh, if I do this, explode the view, you can get it better. And uh, the idea of this is that it's using the collision uh, geometry to retain better the sh shape. Otherwise, with the spheres, uh, is uh, um, as like they lose it a lot. So, ta -ta. it's up to you here if you want to use the switch or not. Ta -ta. Ta. So, this is the first simulation for the branches. After this, what I do is basically for the leaves, I need to identify to which branch they are attached to. So, I basically do a lookup. These are like all nodes, uh, but uh, what they do is just define the correct branch, uh, and you can see that here, um, which uh, they are connected to the correct one. Um, the tricky thing uh, is that, uh, for example, in these uh, parts uh, where uh, you can't use it really the near point function uh, or just look at the closest branch because. Uh, you can get these leaves to attach to this uh, by mistake or vice versa, this maybe to this one. So you have to look, uh, you have to take the points close to the branch, closest to the branch, and just use them to look for the color one. This, and this is the part where I basically. Um, since the branches are breaking, I've, you can see it here. So you see, this is breaking for the main one, and uh, the main mesh is uh, one unique piece. So what I need to do is to break them based uh, on this geometry basically. So again in a loop for each branch I create these points which are going to cut each fragment of the branch like to match these ones and you can see I 
make an effort to turn. Primitive, okay, here it is. So it's basically breaking them based on, on the spheres. And uh, then uh, it's deforming them and skinning them correctly. But you can see, like, uh, yeah, it's good, but. Uh, these thing happens, so I have uh, this post process that they use a lot for uh, bending geometry. So after I have my fracture, and you basically merge them in the back. And this is like checking the distance between points, uh, and uh, if uh, they are close to each other, they are snapped. But if the distance is too big of a threshold, which in this case uh, is um, controlled by this function, they are going to keep that tape. Otherwise, it's like, uh, you get weird things happening. So now let's look at the leaves. Okay, so we are in the leaves setup. Um, how to explain it? Here, I'm taking the pivot uh, that will be here, basically close to the branch, and the leaves are going to move along this uh, hinge. Then uh, here, I'm basically uh, packing them and creating some uh, proxy. So the, I reduce the poly count for each leaf. Leaf, sorry. Uh, here I'm creating the constraints and you can see them here. So the leaf, the leaf is going to move there along this. And uh, if, um, they are still nice. The trick uh, to make them follow the branch animation is to not assign an aim of one extremity of them, which is going. So if you don't specify the name of it, they're going to follow the animation. And you can see them, yeah. Meanwhile, the other is connected to the RPD leaf. Uh, but since the constraints tend to always uh, um, keep their last length, so in this case, it's set to zero, the leaf is going to follow the branch. And you're not going to see this difference uh, in the simulation. This is like a, initially, this is the rest data, and then they're going to follow branch animation, which I don't have here, I think. But uh, yeah, you get the point. Um, this is the lap net. Mm -hmm. This is the multi solver. Uh, because I I need I was this one, which is uh to detach the lip. No. Um, ah yeah, it's reading this uh external sop, which is this one, and is setting the groups basically for the lips uh, if they are uh, going to be touched there or not. Um, we have this uh pop collision in your, and this is just saying uh, to each leaf to don't collide with all the others because otherwise the simulation becomes a mess. Uh, we have then uh, the constraint, which I've been using uh, only this one, I think. But I have uh, two variations for the constraints, it's up to you which one to use. And uh, 
Yeah, here is uh, the rules for breaking the constraints based on the force, the distance, or the torque attribute. And this is just the box. All these are just to give them uh, some wind, some movement to them. After they are detached, you see this specified group, specify the group here. Uh, you can change it uh, how you want. Same for the spin. And this is just uh, if they are uh, close to the ground, uh, basically they have uh, this pretty powerful drag, so they don't uh, act weird, they don't start to roll or uh, uh, keep the move, keep moving. And if I remember correctly, I have also this set here on the um, yeah on the pop wind. So if they are uh, really low on the ground, uh, the wind is not applied. So this works uh, well in a, a grid in a flat plane. If you have a terrain, if you have some. Um, little hill bump which is not flat you need to do the same thing probably but with the using the pdb sample so you use the volume sample function and you test how close they are to the ground but the concept is the same it's just to keep the things easy and after that i'm just caching them out here i'm taking the high resolution leaves and basically just using transform piece to move them. And that's it. Um, I run through it quite quickly, but uh, I think you get a better idea of the shape top uh, instead of uh, just reading on the on my website. Thank you.